Hello friends, I, Daira Bhatia, welcome you to my YouTube channel Maths DNA from origin to infinity. In this video, we are going to solve 6 questions of CSI NET JRF November 2020 of part B. But before that, let me ask you a question. Are you preparing for GATE 2021 mathematics? Then there is a good news for you all. We have 1000 plus solved questions plus revision material including the previous year solved questions of GATE and the link is given below in the description. So get it now. Now let us begin. The first question in this video we are going to solve is let A be a 2 cross 2 matrix with determinant of A equals to 1 and trace of A equals to 3. Then find the value of trace of A square. This was a question of part B and the options are A2, B10, C9 and D7. This is a very simple question if you just know the property of trace, determinant and its relation with eigenvalues. Let us begin. It is given to us that A is a 2 cross 2 matrix with trace of A equals to 3 and determinant of A equals to 1. And we know that trace is nothing but the sum of the eigenvalues and determinant is the product of the eigenvalues. Here it is given that let lambda 1 and lambda 2 be two eigenvalues. We are assuming any two eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 and then trace of a that is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 will be equals to 3 and determinant of a that is equals to lambda 1 into lambda 2 that will be equal to 1. Moving on we have to find the trace of a square but we also know that if lambda is an eigenvalue of a then lambda square is an eigenvalue of a square. So the trace of a square will be nothing but lambda 1 square plus lambda 2 square. Now for this we need the value of lambda 1 square and lambda 2 square. So let us find it. We already have lambda 1 plus lambda 2 equals to 3 and determinant that is lambda 1 into lambda 2 equals to 1. So Squaring lambda 1 plus lambda 2, we get lambda 1 plus lambda 2 whole square equals to lambda 1 square plus 2 times lambda 1 into lambda 2 plus lambda 2 square. Now here we already have the value of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and lambda 1 into lambda 2. So substituting the values, we get 9 equals to lambda 1 square plus 2 into 1 plus lambda 2 square. And that gives you the value of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 that is nothing but trace of a square and that is 9 minus 2 which is equals to 7. So the correct answer is option D. Moving on to our second question. The second and the simple question that was asked in the net examination is if a equals to a 2 cross 2 matrix with entries 3 minus 2, 2 minus 1 then a raised to 20 equals 2. The options are A 41 40 minus 40 minus 39, B 41 minus 40 40 and minus 39, C 41 minus 40 minus 40 and minus 39 and D 41 40 40 and minus 39. Now this was a very simple and straightforward question if you just know how to find the patterns. Let us begin. It is given to us that A is a 2 cross 2 matrix and the entries are very simple 3 minus 2 2 and minus 1. So firstly we find the value of a square you simply multiply the two matrices and you know how to multiply two matrices you get it as 5 minus 4 4 and minus 3. Continuing this we find a raised to 4 that will be a square into a square and you get this as 9 minus 8 8 and minus 7. Now clearly observe the two matrices A square, A4 and also A. You can see on the right column that is right side column you have negative entries and on the left side you have positive entries. Secondly with each power there is a difference of 2 in each of the entries. So if you see the pattern you can easily find that A raised to 20 will be 41 minus 40, 40 and minus 39. You can also solve this question using the eigenvalues, trace and determinant property that will also give you the same answer and the answer will be option B. 
depending upon your strong and weak areas you can solve the question moving on we have third question is let a and b be two cross two matrices then which of the following is true the options are a determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to determinant of a plus determinant of b option b determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to 2 times determinant of a minus 2 times determinant of b option c we have determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to 2 times determinant of a plus 2 times determinant of b and option d we have it as determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to 2 times determinant of a minus 2 times determinant of b now we will solve this question using counter examples so let us begin firstly we take two matrices a and b of 2 cross 2 order and we are taking a simple matrices you don't need to think more about it take any two two cross two simple matrices and don't take higher entries and more complicated entries take natural numbers as entry here i have taken a equals to 1002 and b equals to 3004 now in the question we have to find the determinant of a plus b and a minus b so let us first find a plus b that will be 4006 and a minus b that will be minus 2 0 0 minus 2 Then determinant of a plus b you can easily see from the example that is 24, and determinant of a minus b that is equals to 4. Also, the determinant of a equals to 2 and determinant of b equals to 12. Now just take the values and substitute it in the options, and you will get the correct answer. That is option A says determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to determinant of a plus determinant of b. We have all the values, so 24 plus 4 equals to 2 plus 12. Now that is not possible, so option A is not correct. Option B, determinant of A plus B plus determinant of A minus B equals to 2 times determinant of A minus 2 times determinant of B. Now here 24 plus 4 will be equals to 2 into 2 minus 2 into 12, which is again not possible. So option B is also not correct. Now option C. determinant of a plus b plus determinant of a minus b equals to 2 times determinant of a plus 2 times determinant of b now here 24 plus 4 that is 28 is equals to 2 into 2 plus 2 into 12 that is again 4 plus 24 and that will give you 28 this is possible and so c is the correct answer but we will still check for option d and you will find it at 24 minus 4 is not equals to 2 into 2 minus 2 into 12 so option d is not possible and by taking the example we eliminated three options so this is the importance of counter examples or examples always remember using example you can eliminate an option you cannot prove it correct by using an example i repeat you should always remember that when you are taking examples you are taking example as a counter example to eliminate the option with the help of example you cannot prove that an option is correct so focusing on examples rather than i would suggest focus on counter examples in any competitive exam such as net any state level examination gate or iit exam or any higher mathematics competitive exam here the correct answer is option c now moving on we have fourth question which of the following real quadratic form on r square is positive definite the options are a qxy equals to x into y b q of xy equals to x square minus xy plus y square c q xy equals to x square plus 2xy plus y square and d q of xy equals to x square plus xy before solving the question let me tell you what is positive definite what do we mean by it and then what is a quadratic form also now quadratic form representation for 2 cross 2 matrix will be something like this when m is a matrix then the first entry will be coefficient of x square the other two entries will be symmetric and coefficient of xy will be divided by 2 and the last entry will be coefficient of y square and by positive definite we mean that all the eigen values are greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 any eigen value is not allowed to be negative or 
also the determinant will be greater than 0 because all the eigen values are positive and we also have a sylvester criteria for positive definite matrix which says that a symmetric matrix a is positive definite if and only if all principal minors are positive if you don't know what are principal minors i would say you should refer it once from any reference book you can easily find it otherwise in the video also i have tried to prove it and you can easily understand it from there now let us take the options the first option is a equals to qxy equals to xy now here we will get m matrix equals to 0 1 by 2 1 by 2 and 0 now here the first order principal minor that is determinant of 0 which is 0 and which is not greater than 0 so it will not be a positive definite matrix because we need it as greater than 0 as per Sylvester criteria so option A is not correct moving on to option B it is Q of xy equals to x square minus xy plus y square again making the matrix that will be 1 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and 1 the first principal minor that is determinant of 1 that is a11 that is equals to 1 which is greater than 0 and the second principal minor you get the determinant as 3 upon 4 which is again greater than 0 here both the principal minors are greater than 0 so our given matrix is a positive definite matrix now remember this is a part b question so more than one correct answers are not possible but still we check the remaining two because you never know a similar question can be asked in part c also so checking on option c u of xy equals to x square plus 2xy plus y square here again we make the matrix m that is 1 1 1 and 1 the first principal minus is definitely greater than 0 that is 1 but the second principal minor gives us the determinant as 0 which is not greater than 0 so it is not a positive definite matrix and d q of xy equals to x square plus xy here again we have m equals to 1 1 by 2 1 by 2 and 0 here the first principal minor that is 1 that is greater than 0 but the second one is minus 1 by 4 which is less than 0 so again by Sylvester criteria it is not a positive definite matrix and so the correct answer is option b i would recommend you that if you are in the exam then don't go to prove other options as incorrect if you found one correct answer directly go and take it but yes when you are coming back home see repeat the questions and then check all the options so that when you are appearing in any other competitive exam it will be more helpful to you moving on the fifth question which of the following statements is true and the options are a every even integer n greater than or equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial plus 3 b every odd integer n greater than or equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial c every even integer n greater than or equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial and option d for every integer n greater than or equals to 16 n square divides n factorial plus 1 now this was one of the easiest question because the solution was itself given in the options you just need to assume the value of n 16 or greater than that and just put the values and if you know basic mathematics odd any one you can easily solve it let us solve it together so option a says every even integer n greater than or equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial plus 3 now let n equals to 16 then we have n minus 1 factorial plus 3 that is equals to 15 factorial plus 3 now you should know that 15 factorial will be an even number and 3 is an odd number so when an even number is added to an odd number we get answer as an odd number here <coughs> 15 factorial plus 3 will be odd and 16 is even so even does not divide odd so it is not possible see the option it says for every so it is if true for every then it should be true for 16 also but it is not true for 16 so it cannot be true for every moving on to option b it says every odd integer n greater than or equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial now here take n equals to 17 then you get n minus 1 factorial equals to 16 factorial see i am not taking any integer which are far away from the given value i am just taking the integer that are near to it in most case we will take 16 here it is an odd integer so next odd integer after 16 we get it as 17 so 
So if n equals to 17, then n minus 1 factorial will be 16 factorial. Now 17 is a prime number and it does not divide 16 factorial because it is not present in the 16 factorial. And so it is also not correct. Now option C, every even integer n greater than equals to 16 divides n minus 1 factorial. Here again we are taking n equals to 16, then n minus 1 factorial will be 15. And 16 is nothing but 2 into 8 or 4 into 4. I have selected two different numbers to make it more clear that 2 and 8 both are present in the 15 factorial. So definitely 16 will divide 15 factorial. If you are taking any other integer, then also you can find, suppose you are taking 18, then 18 minus 1 that will be 17 factorial. But in 17 factorial, you will get 2 and 9 that will make you 18 and that will be possible. So option C is correct. 16 divides 15 factorial. Now, as again, this is a question of part B. So only one answer is correct and we have got our answer. But we will still check option D. Here option D says for every integer n greater than equals to 16, n square divides n factorial plus 1. Here again, we will use the result that we used in option A. Let n equals to 16. Then n square will be 256. That will be an even number. And n factorial plus 1, that will be 16 factorial plus 1 and that will be again an odd number. And any even number cannot divide an odd number. So 256 will not divide 16 factorial plus 1. And so the only correct answer that we got is option C. Here D is also not correct. So far we have solved 5 questions and moving on to one more easy and simple question asked in NET 2020. That is the maximum and the minimum values of 5x plus 7y when mod x plus mod y is less than or equals to 1 r. And the options are 5 minus 5, 5 minus 7, 7 minus 5 and 7 minus 7. Many students have made a small mistake over here because they were in a hurry and they tick option C, 7 and minus 5. But that is not correct. Let me show you. The correct answer will be 7 minus 7 and how. Simply, you just think about the possible pairs that will satisfy the given equation for the maximum and the minimum values. The possible pair will be 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0 and 0, minus 1 because they are the boundaries of a unit circle. So we are just taking four points and we are finding the values at these four points. At 1, 0, the value will be 5. At 0, 1, it is 7. At minus 1, 0, it is minus 5 and at 0, minus 1, it is minus 7. So the maximum value is 7 and the minimum is not minus 5, it is minus 7. And the correct answer is option D. Thank you and you can be a member of our social club and you can watch more than 190 plus videos on my YouTube channel. You can also join us on Instagram as well as Telegram channel for complete study material and on Facebook also. Thank you.